We've finally done it. We've signed Yoscar Gradiol to Man City for a deal worth close to £80 million. Um, with all the add-ons, it will make him the most expensive centre-back in the history of football and the most expensive defender in the history of the sport as well. It's a massive deal. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I will be breaking down this deal in this video and, of course, covering the start of an unbelievable City uh, season. We've got the Club World Cup. We've got the Super Cup coming up and, of course, hopefully retaining the Champions League. Let's just start off with who Yoscar Gvardiol is to Man City. Uh, he's a young 21-year-old, exciting centre-back, ball-playing centre-back, aggressive in the challenge, mobile, he's robust, he's dynamic, he's everything you want from a future centre-back uh, to be leading City even for the next 10 years. Uh, and you look at City's recruitment in the last five to 10 years, it's been absolutely exceptional. Net spend in the last four years has been close to 120 million quid, which is unbelievable in today's day and age, just above Fulham in that kind of uh, bracket. And Gvardio obviously is a lot of money, but look at the amount of income you get from actually winning tournaments, winning football matches, winning the Champions League. Um, I think in a relatively quiet summer for City, this looks like a very, very smart bit of business. Think about all the money that we got 20 million for James Trafford. Um, so many other kids in the academy this summer will be getting, you know, those nine, 10, 15 million pound deals. You bring in someone of Gvardiol's experience, of his quality. He's already a regular for Croatia, of course. He was fantastic in the World Cup. People will bring up that clip from Messi. And then you've got to remember that it's Messi. And it was one of the best performances ever in football, what he put, put in uh, against Croatia, against all those sides for Argentina in the World Cup last year. So Gvardiol getting ripped up by Messi isn't anything new. Um, and he was. I, from, I, met, I watched all the Croatia games um, in the last World Cup. He was absolutely fantastic. That is just the reality. He stood head and shoulders above everyone and looked imperious in that mask, of course. And the big thing, I think City will always be connected to players that perform well against us. And that there is the reality that I know he conceded seven against us last season, of course, for Leipzig. But he scored a fantastic header as well. Um, so that is just the reality of the situation that City know this guy inside out. The fact that the club are so prepared to chase someone is a big statement about who the club thinks they are. Uh, and obviously, Guardio looks like a leader. He looks like a future City captain alongside Ruben Diaz. That kind of situation at the back is very, very interesting. We'll talk about that in a minute in terms of the makeup of the squad going into next season and going on into the future. It's very, very exciting. Um, but the overview is, I think, strengthening while you're strong is so important for a club that's just won the treble. You can't strengthen the striking position. I think maybe uh, a, a winger would be important to replace Mares. I think Phil Foden's got a massive role to replace Ilkay Gundogan. Kovacic has come in for £25 million. If you, if you sign Gvardiol and Kovacic for £100 million, it's an unbelievable business. That's just the reality of the economic context. It's, it's unbelievable business. It's smart business. and It's, it's like for like with adding that youth where... Both those players can, you know, raise their game. And they're not joke players. A champion, a, a double Champions League winner in Kovacic. International teammate Guardiol, one of the most sought-after centre-backs in the world. It's absolutely massive for City. It's absolutely massive. I think the club will go on next season rejuvenated by having uh, these kind of players come in and fill, fill out the squad. I was worried, especially after the, the, the first time we won the Premier League, that we had kind of a few squad filler signings come in and maybe the club didn't quite know how to handle success or how to kick on after a major achievement, after a major kind of hurdle had been, been jumped by the club. I think City know full well that, a bit like Ferguson, you know, he was massively good at replacing big players and getting other quality players through the, through the door after they were successful at Man United. And that's the reality. City have been successful and we go and sign one of the best young sense backs in world football and Kovacic, who I think is a world-class midfielder on his day. That's just my opinion. Um, next season's going to be very interesting. I think the four centre-back solution at the back will be very, very important for City uh, and for Guardiola. I think he wants to minimise those kind of those classic City counter-attacks where I remember, you know, Traore for, for Wolves kind of bursting through the lines and stuff like that. And we didn't see much of that last season. I think it's because we had four athletic centre-backs that were very narrow when we lost the ball and were able to kind of out, you know, bully teams and bully teams higher up the pitch. You didn't see much chasing back and running back like headless, headless chickens. 
And you did have Kyle Walker, who was the one player that kind of could mop up if we needed to. Think of Vinicius Jr. But I think in 90% in, in of the games next season, it will be four at the back. I think Rico Lewis will be an option, absolutely. But you're thinking of the physicality that Gavardio, as a, let's, just, let's just put Gavardio in there, Akanji, Ruben Diaz, John Stones, Ake. These are all quick centre-backs relatively you know, to how powerful they are as, as athletes, as runners. And then on the ball, I mean, he's a very, very smart footballer on the ball. Got a good left foot, so with so has Nathan Ake. A lot of balance there. Let's let's talk about the squad composition, uh, uh, composition then going into next season because it's very, very interesting. I wish Carl Walker would stay. I don't know what's happened there. Uh, there's been a bit of a, a, a lack of news in the last few weeks. Obviously, he played Bayern recently, and there was a kind of talk of him signing for Bayern at the point at that point in time. Didn't quite work out. So he's still at the club. Let's just take Carl Walker out of it and assume he is going. At right back, you can now have Rico Lewis as your first choice, kind of normal right back. But then I think he'll play a, a Kanji at right back. I think a Kanji will be a right back. And then you've got two centre backs, John Stones, Ruby Diaz. And John Stones can slot into midfield from centre back. Or you play a Kanji as centre back and John Stones can slot into midfield from right back. However, he looks to do it. And he did change it at points, that kind of angle of whether he's coming up from the centre back role to pop into midfield or from right back. Then you've got Ruben Diaz, who has to start every single game for City next season of note. Uh, a big game in the Super Cup coming up. Of course, Club World Cup football will be something that Guardiola will be looking at. So it's Ruben Diaz with Stones and or Kanji. And then Guardiola will have a long kind of road to, to walk down to get into that centre-back position. At the moment, he doesn't actually start for City, in my opinion, when everyone's fit. And he is basically replacing Laporte, who looks like he'll be leaving now. It must be leaving. But the interesting thing will be Nathan Ake. He's not fit for the Community Shield. Obviously, Guardiola won't play in the Community Shield. But going into the first few weeks of the season, Guardiola comes in fully fit. I think he'll play as a left-back. I think he'll have more physicality. It'll be hard for him in, in the first few weeks being drawn out. But once Nathan Ake knew when to go, when to challenge, Nathan Ake was superb last season as a left-back. And it took him a year. Don't forget, Chelsea tried to re-sign Nathan Ake from City for 40 million quid last summer. And he stayed and he won a treble. So it took a little bit of time. And then he was fantastic. He was fantastic against Atletico Madrid when we, we, we narrowly beat them in the Champions League a couple of years ago. And that was really, really hard. So Gavardio comes in. I think he starts as a left back tight with a Kanji, Stones and Diaz. And then he fights for a, a starting place once Ake's back. And then he starts for a starting place when uh, he fights for a starting place when Ruben Diaz rotated. When a Kanji, if he picks up an injury or Stones picks up an injury, he always has a se uh, an injury every season, uh, John Stones. And that's where his weight, he's worth his weight in gold, as the saying goes. 50 um, old games a season, the Club World Cup is no joke. Gavardio comes in for relatively, it's a lot of money in one sense, but then based on the profit that the club's making from other players, squad rotation, um, I think it's very, very interesting. I think it's a very, very good deal. No question about it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Gavardio will be a Man City player. I think he'll help us win the Premier League. What can I say? Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you soon.